I'm standing in an industrial building in Montrachan, which is situated between Aberdeen and Ocean Park. Until 2006, Montrachan was a highly industrial area, but many of the old buildings are now being demolished and the area is changing rapidly. The old Wong Chuk Hung housing estate has been demolished and replaced with a depot for the MTR's South Island Line trains. And above this depot will soon be built 13 tower blocks of middle class housing. Wong Chuk Hung is being developed as a commercial area of newly built office buildings and hotels but some of the original industrial buildings are still here and still house many different businesses including warehouses, engineering companies, fabricators, food production kitchens, storage houses, art galleries and printing companies. During the three decades after 1960, Hong Kong was one of the world's major printing centres and Wong Chuk Hung was a well-known location for many printing companies, with print orders coming in from all around the world. With increasing labour and rental costs and the opening of the mainland economy in the 1990s, much of Hong Kong's printing industry has relocated to the mainland and other countries. My own office is in Wong Chuk Hung, but like you, I only have a glimpse of the printing companies still working here. I'm going to talk to Norman de Bracchi, who is an expert printer and has been in the business for over 60 years. First working in his family company and then for Penguin Books and for the large Paul Hamlin printing group. He arrived in Hong Kong in the 1970s to work in what would become the biggest print company by volume in the world. Now retired, Norman is an artist and photographer and still occasionally consults on art book printing projects and art magazines. And now let's visit Norman de Bracchi in his Causeway Bay studio to talk about his life in printing. Hi Norman. Hi John. Welcome to the studio. Right. Nice Hi. to see you. I come from a family steeped in the, the graphic arts. A father who was a photo engraver, grandfather also a uh, wet plate cab operator. My grandfather, um, his brother was an antiquarian bookseller and there was also a typeset, a great grandfather lurking somewhere. So it was inevitable I <laughs> became a lithographer. I was at school, I was naturally I was an artist and I had scholarships to art colleges but at that time, uh, you remember just after the Second World War, the family dominated so I came into uh, lithography rather than letterpress or photo engraving and I was an apprenticed um, lithographer and, but I continued throughout that time to paint and always take photographs. My father for example <coughs> made me uh, a little pinhole camera when I could barely walk so I was used to taking photographs. Um, I didn't take it seriously, photography was fun but I was a natural at uh, doing it. <laughs> so 
I developed it as a lithographer and I became, an, I was a natural at it. Um, I somehow had, because of the family I suppose, and the business of always looking at colour and judging colour, I knew what to do without being told, so I, I didn't really need a lot of training. So, and when it came the time for, for me to do my national service, for example, when I was 18, I did the same thing in, when I was in the services. I was um, a lithographer in the services. And at one time or other, um, I was going to be part of a mobile newspaper uh, to, for the troops in, um, in Korea. Uh, but fortunately, peace broke out. So I became a, a, a printer in Singapore rather than uh, in, in Korea. But so I developed all the time through, through that. And I was involved, I suppose, in printing and publishing because I always worked in a situation where there was an involvement with photographers, designers, artists and so it was natural for me to sort of, I was a bit of a link really between the creative and the technical because I had my foot in both camps and I expect it was working for Penguin Books and Alan Lane that really made me aware of the difference between art and design because then I became very much aware that art was for the person themselves. The designer worked for somebody and that there's a dichotomy there which is always going to be there and it was interesting and it was also made me aware that the good designer understood art and the good artist understood design without mixing the two. Um, I was working at uh, the, the uh, Hamlin Group um, in a sort of semi-technical, I was, I was called technical advisor and I worked in the design department of the Hamlin Group when I was offered the job in Hong Kong. And that was in 1975. And I was given one brief. Um, I was told there was a company here in Hong Kong that was partially owned by the Hammond Group. And they were going to be producing books for publishers in Europe, here in Hong Kong, because printing was good and printing was cheap. But my brief was a single line, bring the quality of Hong Kong printing up to an international level. That's your job, go and do it. Um, and that is basically what I was doing for 20 years um, in Hong Kong. And it was exciting because it meant I got to meet a lot of writers, a lot of artists, and a lot of photographers. And um, I learned from them two things. One, the need to be diplomatic, especially when you're with a, a very egotistical uh, photographer or, or designer. On the other hand, there were certain photographers uh, that when, or artists, that when one worked with them, you quickly established a rapport. And in, the, in those cases, they quite often said to me, look, you know you're going to get a better job passing this work on press than I will ever do myself because you know how to make the right decisions and you also know how to get on with the press man because the most perhaps the most important thing of all is not the technical aspect it's the human one that when you're on the back end of a printing press there's a guy pressing the buttons and making all the adjustments you have to give him some dignity, some, some presence, because he's, he's working for you and you're working for him. So it was very, very important to establish that. And I did, I was quite well known, I suppose, in, in printing establishments, in, whereas a lot of people were not allowed on, onto the press. But I was always welcome, because the press guys knew me. And when they changed their job, and went to another factory. 
they would all say hi the next time <laughs> I was at that particular um, uh, establishment. What is good design? Well, it's a number of things. First of all, I suppose, looking at anything which is printed, it's legibility. It's the choice of a suitable typeface. I wouldn't want to read a book uh, that was completely uh, sans serif. You know, I would like, I like to see traditional types in a book that I'm going to read. It's fine in a, in a periodical, perhaps, or, or a brochure. I like to see images and type together so that they, they sort of enhance each other. And so often you find that is not the case, that the, sometimes the captions dominate the image, or the image dominates too much of the, of the, of the writing. So to me, simplicity, readability is, is what makes good design. So my burning the midnight oil in uh, Long Truck Hang sort of is quite a long time ago. And then it was entirely industrial. It was the sort of, uh, sort of place that you drove through and didn't stop. It was very industrial. And um, I guess it had not much of a personality. And people who, who worked there and the printers always liked to tell people their factory was in Aberdeen rather than Wong Chok Hang because you've got the Aberdeen Boat Club just up the road and the Marina Club and the, the, the uh, Ocean Park and they all sort of talked about Aberdeen rather than Wong Chok Hang so it's very very different now. Yes, I mean Mandarin Offset used to produce books for publishers worldwide um, we didn't do any production or very little for local publishers. It was all uh, overseas, America, Australia, France, Germany, all sorts of things. And often those books would be multiple editions. You would do a French edition, a German edition, an Italian edition of the same, of the same book. So uh, yes, it was entirely, that was our business. And it was millions and millions of books that we produced in Hong Kong and eventually that of course the same thing happened and still does happen to some extent but it's moved from Hong Kong to China but it was that first brief that I was given that I always enjoyed was you know keep this printing level up, up to an international standard and it meant in the end we actually produced books for Japan and that is saying something because Japan was the standard that, that we, we used to aspire to. That, that's very true. The, I can give you an example. Uh, quite often I would be on press with a photographer and perhaps the publisher as well at the same time. And it was important to establish who really was in charge of that situation. Was it the photographer or the publisher? Um, the publisher really wanted to take control, but it was really the photographer who was important. Um, one particular case, the American photographer, Bill Levy, was in Hong Kong, and I was on press with him. And that was a wonderful experience because he wanted his book, and so did the client, to be rather special. And so we worked together, we devised different ways of getting the result he wanted. And this was a book separated in three colours, a black and two greys. And whereas it's normal when a book is finished to have a spot varnish which goes over the whole of the image to protect it more than anything, not to give it shine, but to, to give it protection. And so we took one of those greys and used that as the spot varnish. But we didn't use just a glossy varnish. We used a mixture of 50-50, that was 50 glossy and 50 matte varnish. And so it gave those images a lovely, almost three-dimensional look, although the book was in black and white. And this is and the book here? This is the book. And Builder's photographs now 
are in museums all through America. And he and I are still in contact, and this book's what? It's, I was still, uh, it must be at least 15 years old. <laughs> so it's a, a very nice experience. And things like that um, uh, make printing and publishing and design worthwhile. When you're with a real professional, you can be a professional yourself. And that's the, the important, most important thing.